Welcome to Cannabis Talk 101 with Blue and Joe Grande, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. Thank you guys for listening to our show all around the world. Make sure you check out our website, CannabisTalk101.com, as we have so many great articles and blogs on the site for you to check out. And feel free to give us a call anytime at one 800 420 1980 and check us out on youtube and instagram all social media at cannabis talk 101 my brother from another mother blue is at the number one christopher wright and you could always catch me on the gram at joe grande 52 go ahead and say hello to each and every one of us you guys and i hope you're ready to make your own edibles because truffly made offers the highest quality most affordable tabletop candy depositors and silicone molds on the market it's made in germany and developed by candy makers for candy makers now truffly may can help you with your recipe services such as developing or just uh, adjusting recipes custom silicone molds and they can come to your facility with on-site consulting and train your team with the with the candy <laughs> depositors if i can spit it out this is for your home or commercial use you can manufacture over 10,000 pieces of candy per hour order yours today check out the website trufflymade.com or give them a call directly at area code 619-500 3102. Today on the show, I'm so interested to hear about you, young lady, because you just look so damn fly. And everybody was talking about you. But we have a lady who's one of the driving forces behind the brand that's quickly becoming one of the go to destinations for OG bud smokers in the LA County. Joining us on the table, you guys, Rosa Martinez, <laughs> the inventory manager and event coordinator at OG Nation, a brick and mortar cannabis dispensary in good old Maywood, California, soon to be in El Monte as well, that offers the best OG strains in the the game grown and harvested by experts in the industry and OG Nation's commitment to quality and customer satisfaction is unmatched as their knowledgeable staff will guide you through OG Nation's extensive selection to find the perfect product for you guys whether you're looking for flowers edibles concentrates or CBD topicals they got you covered folks like a blanket make sure you check out their websites ognationca.com or the IG page OG Nation Maywood or just go check them out yourself if you're in the area 6142 Walker Avenue in Maywood California 90270 and experience the OG Nation difference tell them you play a pot as a cannabis talk 101 sent you without further ado give it up for Rosa Martinez <laughs> wow way to go guys <laughs> Welcome to the show, Rosa. Thanks for having me. I mean, I'm looking at OG Nation and not realizing what a close connection we have over here. I see big boy all over your guys' stuff, which is crazy. I mean, pull up this good old IG real quick. I mean, look at big boy on there just off the top, off the... He's talking, he's going to be there and come meet him. You guys got Exhibit, George Lopez. I mean, just a hot spot. Are you putting all these together? Um, so Carl, who's one of the owners, he's really good friends with Big Boy. So we work really closely with Big Boy and, you know, we send him off his goodie bags and then he gives them off to, you know, his interviewees. Yeah, mm -hmm. I seen him with Usher and all kinds of folks. Mm -hmm. So the owner of the company is good folks with Big. Yeah. Who's the owner? So there's three of them. There's three partners. It's going to be Carl Mandia and Sacred Lopez and Jamie Maju. Oh, I wonder if I know these guys. I don't know if you know, I used to work with Big Boy. Okay. For years. You didn't know that, huh? Yes, I did. Oh, you did. <laughs> we met before, though. You were at my birthday party, I was told. Yes. Yes, and I was realizing you didn't tell me that in the room going, Joe, you should have slapped me right in the face going, Joe, I was here for your party, Ben, though. And I was like, oh, my God, I remembered you, but then I didn't remember you. And then right now when I came up, I was like, now I remember you as I'm staring at you more. I just kind of walked in there and said hello. Yeah, but. I was really stoned. You were really stoned so at the I, party? It was like hard for me to even talk to anybody, honestly. <laughs> 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 well, that's a good thing. So how did you get involved with this company? Um, I actually was working at a trap shop, um, back in 2020, my main source of income before that was in nightlife. Um, I was bartender, still am. And, um, during the pandemic, I got a job at a trap shop and, you know, shit went down. They busted it. Like, uh, more like some gang banging type of stuff. <laughs> oh, so it got shut down. Um, kind of sort not of. really. I ended up getting into like a huge fight. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and so I ended up leaving the company, and a friend of mine was working at this when it was um, under another, day, another name. And um, I started off butt tending, and then from there I got moved on to um, management, and then from there 
I got moved up to be the buyer slash event coordinator. I mean, the buyer is a key role there. Everybody's on you. Everybody wants to know you. Everybody wants to be your buddy because they want their product yeah. in the store. So that's a big role to have. Mm -hmm. That's like the key role to have at a dispensary. Like, oh, who's the buyers? I mean, you're getting invited to events. Mm -hmm. You're getting invited everywhere because you're the buyer. Everybody wants to give you free product because why? You're the buyer. It's not a bad job. Yeah, it's <laughs> not a bad gig at all. For those who are wondering, like, if you wanted to get that job in a dispensary, I think the buyer is probably one of the coolest ones, but yet one of the most stressful ones as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Because it's like, if the product shit in there, who do we blame? Myself. Exactly, the buyer. Yeah. And OG Nation's been known to have some quality flour in there. Let's talk about, about the products that you guys do have in there, and what do you like in there? I mean, I'm a flower smoker, um, mainly flower. I like blunts. So um, my top is flower. Um, when I'm out and about and, you know, you can't just be smoking blunts everywhere, it's good to have a cool little pen on you. So I like to hit my plug and play here and there. <laughs> plug and play is a good one. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, these are good because you got a choice of everything. You got yeah. plug and play. You got dime. You got every freaking brand you could imagine. I mean, we have gelato here today right now, too. I mean, so it's like you can get anything and everything. What do you find to be the best seller at OG Nation in Maywood? Um, at the moment, it's pods. Pods. Really? Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think maybe because it's discreet. You know, it's easier to just take a hit, go on about your day or about whatever you're doing. So people just tend to gravitate more towards those. Is Plug and Play the bigger one selling for you guys? Stizzy and Plug and Play. Stizzy is a huge yes. brand name. Plug and Play is a big brand name as well. Mm -hmm. But it's just funny that like different regions, different areas, different cities, everything's different, right? Like we have these multi operators and oh yeah, our biggest seller over here is pods, mm -hmm. our biggest seller over here is flour. But the majority that we do here is mostly flour. So it's really okay. interesting to hear that OG Nation mm -hmm. is mostly pods. Yeah, but we do have a house brand that is one of our top sellers as well, so. Oh really, your, mm -hmm. your guys is, well, and is it probably cheaper as well because now you guys are manufacturing exactly. it. Exactly. Putting out good quality mm -hmm. and able to give it out for a cheaper price. Yes. Like what does the eights go for there? Ooh, the eights go from anywhere between 30 to $40. Wow. And then we do happy hour twice a day, 20% off. And then we do deals. What, so, are, what are the happy hour times? So we do 7 a.m. from open to 11. And then from four to seven. That's dope. Yeah. Do you find people coming in and capitalizing on those? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That is really, really fun. We're going to take a break real quick. When we come back, Rosa, I want to find out a little bit more about this store, how these guys open it, where they come from, and where you come from. Because <laughs> I know you're born in Mexico. I know you lived in Boston. But you've been basically here since a few months old. So I want to get into the head of Rosa Martinez. <laughs> it's Cannabis Talk 101. We'll be right back after this break. My name is Freddie Sage. I've spent nearly 20 years in the world of criminal defense, cannabis, and entertainment. In addition, I work directly and closely with helping brands scale, conducting their marketing plan, their strategies, their branding, and supply chain management. At the Fox Firm, we pride ourselves in giving access to low-cost, fair representation, but giving an exceptional first-class law firm representation to the client because it's not about what you pay, it's the love, the care, and the passion, along with the experience that your attorney has for you. I don't know if you ever found yourself caught up, folks, and need a lawyer to help you out. Well, we got the man for you. Call our dude, Freddie Sage, Mr. Freddie T Sage. He's an attorney at the Fox Firm. He has over 20 years of experience and has become one of the best known criminal defense firms in cannabis law attorneys in the state of California. From low level misdemeanors to high level felonies and any matters related to cannabis, folks, the Fox Firm offers a free initial consultation on all legal matters. Call him right now, 310 877 5033, or check out his website, thefoxfirm.com, with two X's. Rosa Martinez. The inventory manager and event coordinator at OG Nation. It's cool to hear a little bit how you got that from a trap shop to go in there. But do you know the story of how these guys created this brand and this brick and mortar of a dispensary that's popping over there in Maywood? Quite frankly, 
It's gone through a few transitions. I'm not exactly sure. I came in when it was already established. Um, I just know that as soon as it became OG Nation, just took, took off. off. Yeah. Yeah, because the name alone, it just sounds cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's very inclusive, you know? It's an OG Nation. It's everybody. Yeah. And everybody's an OG. Like, you know what I mean? At you this point, at 25, you're an OG for God's exactly. sakes in the hood. You know? It's like you lived to 25, OG. We're, Here we go. We're made it, man. Maywood, too. You know, we're in the barrio, so. Yeah. That's what she does. If you don't know Maywood, folks, exactly. It's yeah. very, very uh, ethnic area where mostly black and Mexican mm -hmm. by far, right? Yeah. I mean, that's just, are you guys by the mall there too, or where exactly? Um, who? I think we're we're not exactly by the mall. Which mall are you talking about? Isn't that the Maywood Shopping Center there that I remember going to, or there's a I remember going there in Maywood before, and I haven't been to your guys' dispensary. I mean, dispensary. there's a bunch of little plazas around there, but not not really a mall. So you guys stay busy then? Oh yeah. It's yeah, a pop and spot. Getting, we keep getting busier. I mean, to see what you guys are doing as far as having like exhibits other artists mm -hmm. getting big boy to show up that's not a you know that, that that's a little paper right there you guys been because you guys are obviously doing well but it's there in the hood and you guys get these cats to show up like that yeah. that's a good sign yeah, right absolutely. and it's good ownership that yeah. that the relationships because mm -hmm. i gotta figure out who these owners are because if they know big for a long time like mm -hmm. i said i wonder if they know you got to drop the joe grande when you go back to the office and say gotcha. joe grande is over here and who, who the hell knows big that they should know me <laughs> you know what i mean and tell them next time to get their asses on the show like where are they at motherfuckers but the show. <laughs> exactly so now that you've been working there are you guys training your butt tenders Absolutely. how do you guys do that to educate your guys' staff to treat the community so we're big on customer service. We always want to make sure that, you know, whoever we hire, we're also very strict on who we hire. We probably hire like one in every 20 people that we interview. Um, my boss wants to make sure that he always hires the right people with good attitudes, positive, you know, don't come in with any drama, any kind of stuff like that, um, that are excited to come to work as well, you know. Um, my role with the position, you know, whenever I bring any brand in or even with the existing brands that we have, I always want to make sure that since we, do tend, especially at the moment that we're hiring for the new location, we want to make sure that our staff is always educated. So therefore, as soon as we onboard a new brand, we immediately set up the butt tender trainings and the PADs and, you know, get them sampled out. That way they could try the product and, you know, because at the end of the day, they're our soldiers. They're the ones in front selling the products and we want to make sure that everything's moving. So, How hard is it to get a job at a dispensary, let alone OG Nation? You said one out of 10, 20? Yeah. You know what? I don't think it's hard to get a job at a dispensary to get a job at our dispensary. <laughs> it's hard. It's a little different because, you know, we want to make sure that we're hiring the, the right people, you know. Um, from what I've seen, we have like a zero turnover rate because we also take care of our staff. You know, our bosses are big on making sure that our staff is taken care of and our vendors are taken care of. So we pride ourselves on that. Oh, so you guys ain't knowing vendors then? Huh? You guys ain't knowing vendors. Hell no. Nah. Everybody gets paid. <laughs> Everybody get, You bring your stuff in, you're buying it. Everybody gets paid. And you're the buyer. So you're like, okay, we buy this up front. We ain't going to put this on a lease and wait to pay you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it makes it nice. And everybody, yeah. no one's talking crap. Absolutely Because Lord not. knows in this game, it happens. Oh, There's I've seen a million. It. I've seen it. Dispensaries mm -hmm. out there, a million people that are owed money. And, you know, it just, it becomes a terrible game. Yeah. No, I've seen it. I've heard of it. Yeah. And it's <laughs> tough. So let me ask you this. What are some of the anecdotal stories that you've seen from patients that come in and even from when you were just working as a bud tender at the trap shops where you've seen cannabis really help patients? Um, I've had a lot of patients come in like, you know, with anxiety or even with eating disorders, you know, cancer patients and they resort to cannabis because it's natural and they're looking for a different way to like help them with either their eating or their sleeping or their pain. So, you know, that's when the education comes in because we want to make sure that we're also um, referring them to the right strains, to the right product, you know. Is there something that comes into OG Nation more than not, meaning a typical problem that you guys are like, okay, this is more for this? Like, like typical symptoms of is it anxiety that comes in more is it stress is it back pain is it 
uh, you know, I, cancer, like what, what are the majority, or is there not a majority of patients that come in? It's a, just always a variety. It's always a variety. It's always a variety. Um, definitely a lot of sleep. A people want to just get some good rest. People just want to sleep. Yeah. And that becomes stress. I mean, when you yeah, look at it, it's yeah. like, I can't sleep. Why? Because you're too stressed mm -hmm. in the day. What made you, Rosa, enjoy cannabis? What led you to this field? Um, I mean, I've been smoking since I was hella young. Um, and I think for myself, I, when I was really young, I, to myself, had an eating disorder. So um, one of my friend's moms, like, Sorry, mom. <laughs> but my friend's mom forced me to smoke weed so that I would gain an appetite. And then once, you know, I got through that. You were off laka or what? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, w I used to be a ballerina. So I was no really way. consumed with like my body weight and, you know, how it looked and stuff like that. And so um, I stopped taking dancing as, serious, as seriously as I was. And my, like I said, my friend's mom was like, no, you're going to smoke this every day. And she would leave food in front of me. And eventually got to the point where I started getting an appetite and I started getting healthy again. So in a way, it's like, I almost see like it saved my life. <laughs> I mean, very possible, right? Yeah. And I mean, you never then, know. Yeah. Since then, it's helped with my anxiety. It's helped with my sleeping. And so therefore, the more that I started getting involved in cannabis, the more I started seeing how good for you it is not just in a recreational way but in you know a healthy way like where did you grow up in los angeles um who i moved around a lot so i was in bell gardens okay and then Bel in uh whittier and then I where lived the in girls are prettier hello <laughs> <laughs> um and then i lived in downtown la and now i'm in north hollywood now, as you've been in those areas and especially when you were with your family and you started smoking weed at a young age i mean growing up most homes, most neighborhoods, you know, I don't know about most, a lot of neighborhoods, a lot of people, it would be looked at the mota, the this, the mm -hmm. that, especially for us Latin folks, you know what yeah. I mean? The cucuy, mijo, no, get away from that. Was your family more that way or like Blue? Blue grew up, it was second nature. His dad sold oh, it, no. grew it, loved it, it was good. Oh, How man. was it for you and your household? In my household, it was like the gateway drug. It was all bad, you know. Um, yeah, there, there was no way you couldn't bring that around my family because it would just be like looked down upon. So really like who, what would they say? Um, my mom would say that I'm going to end up being homeless or, you know, I'm going to be all strung out and, you know, resort to other types of drugs and, before you know it, you're going to be a prostitute, mija. Yep. No. I'll be out in the streets. like. Isn't it crazy how like that little mentality of the propaganda yeah. of what they've learned and taught certain families, didn't matter, Mexican, black, white, mm -hmm. Asian. Some folks literally thought this way right. about cannabis. And then you're realizing going, so were you hiding it from your family when you were using it? <sighs> Fuck yes. <laughs> I hid it from my parents. And what's funny is that my little brother came home one time faded as fuck and my mom caught him and I'm in the background like <laughs> you know and um it wasn't until I it was like in my 20s that I told my mom that I smoked weed and she just broke down like what did I do wrong and this is and that and I'm just like oh god mom like what, what, what you mean like I'm not, I'm not I'm not in the streets I'm not doing other drugs and then I started educating her on you know the benefits of cannabis and how it can help certain things and pain and this, this and that. And now my mom won't like, even let me come home unless I have a bag of gummies for her. Shut so. your mouth right now, Rosa. Yeah. She wants her, her, what, what does she call Her churros. She calls them churros, her joints. Right. And she smokes weed now. Oh yeah. So I got her from smoking cigarettes to smoking weed. How great is that? I actually that? got my whole family into smoking weed, except my dad. Here, pop still doesn't do it. No, my dad won't. He just still like, and what does he do when he looks at your mom and everybody else smoking? Just My whatever? dad just shakes his head. Like, God, I can't believe you guys are doing this shit. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. He don't do no edibles at night to try to make him relax no. or nothing. Mm -mm. But he'll have a fucking beer, I'm sure. No, he's straight edge. No. Yeah, completely. How dope is that, though? Yeah, he just watches all of us get high. <laughs> Hey, nothing wrong with it, as, especially if he doesn't need it mm -hmm. or know that, you know what I mean? Not even the CBD, not even creams or I've rubs. I've tried. I've given him so many types of CBD because my dad is diabetic. Um, so I've tried to give him different types of CBDs, like topicals or vapes, gummies, anything like that. One time I did give him gummies and it did help him a lot. He said he was able to, like, get out of bed with, uh, without his, his joints hurting so much. And 
Um, he was able to grip things, you know, but he's so paranoid about cannabis that he just stopped taking it because he was scared to get tested. He's a drug driver. So. Oh, mm -hmm. I was just going to ask that too, going, he probably yeah. has a position in life mm -hmm. where he doesn't look at it where I can just do this freely, let alone even CBD. And a lot of truck drivers, it's funny, I have a good friend of mine named Randy Flores who we talk all the time and he's a truck driver as well. And Joe, I want to use this when he has bad back and this. I go, dude, you're a truck driver though, dog. I go, I wouldn't even recommend you using CBD just in case you get tested. Why? I'm like, because there's it could show up. I'm right. like, you, I you're know. in a position that you know mm -hmm. it could show up. It's unfortunate, but that's the position truck drivers are in. Yeah, but I mean, I've tried to give them like hemp derived CBD, which is different. It right. won't come out as THC. But he still won't do it. He's right there. I mean, the creams and rubs, you would hope they wouldn't show up, but you don't know for sure. I mean, you would think they wouldn't show up, but yeah. for God's sakes, it's one of those random tests that you look at and you go, mm -hmm. I mean, this is your job. So that's so funny, dude. Your family went from no miha to give me some miha. Mm -hmm. That's got to be like validation for you that you're doing oh, yeah. the right thing. Absolutely. Feels good. And everybody in the family, where do you fall in? You said brother. Younger, older, where do you fall in line so in the family? So I'm the second oldest out of four. It's boy, girl, boy, girl. And nice. And do they all engage in cannabis as well? They sure do. Everyone does? Oh, yeah. So everyone looking at Rosa, so what do you got there? What, what kind of grab time. bag you bringing Every home? Every time I come over, it's like, oh, do you have anything? <laughs> hey, can I get the happy hour even though it's fucking 2 o'clock? <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's 9 p.m. Can I still get the happy hour <laughs> <Yeah>. deal? <laughs> Like, can I get the sister hookup? <laughs> can I get your discount, please, please, please? Mm -hmm. It's Cannabis Talk 101. We're here with the folks from OG Nation. I want to talk about the events that you guys are doing over there as you are the event coordinator and the buyer there. And I also want to be able to say, do you give out your information for people that are trying to get in there? Yeah. I mean, anybody can email me, rosa at ognationca.com. And I want you to give some tips when we come back on what people should do that are out there pitching their products. It's Cannabis Talk 101. We'll be right back after this break. Are you using professional flavors to make your edibles? Loran's Super Strengths add bold flavors to gummies, lozenges, beverages, chocolates, and more. And with over 100 flavors to choose from, the possibilities are endless. Our bakery emulsions, both organic and traditional, are prized for their dynamic flavor, their versatility, and their flavor retention and high heat applications. If you like your infused treats frozen, our Flavor Fountain line is phenomenal for creating ice cream, gelato, frozen yogurt, and semi fritos with a kick. Use code CANNABIS20 at checkout to receive 20% off your order. Turn your typical into something special, folks. When it comes to infused products, the flavor you taste should be just as enjoyable as the feeling you experience. Make sure you check out the website, loranoils.com. We're sitting here with Rosa Martinez, the inventory manager and event coordinator at OG Nation out there in Maywood, California. If you ever want to stop by and say hello to her, I think you should, guys, because, you know, she's real easy on the eyes. 6142 Walker <laughs> Avenue, Maywood, California, 90270. You are a beautiful young lady, though, Thank and you it's much. good to have you here and, and hang out with me. you. Good good vibes and since you're here on my birthday now i gotta flirt with you even more and have fun with you and bullshit <laughs> with you because i'm like oh we're folks folks now at this point you know what i mean um but rosa when i went to break i wanted to give some people some tips you're the buyer you're looking at brands that come in and i'm sure or does it matter their pitch or is it all about the brand is it the story and the pitch is it all the above what is it that can set a brand apart to help get on the shelves? Um, ultimately, for me, is the support. The support from the brand. What do you mean? So, Elaborate. Whenever a brand comes, I, you know, I have a set of questions that I ask. Um, most of the time, I want to make sure, like, you know, social media. Are you able to promote us on your social media so people know where to find your product? Um, are you able to offer promos? Do I have to have a huge following? You don't, but as long as it's organic and as long as you're engaging with customers and, you know, you're able to put something out there like, hey, look, now we're at OG Nation and people are asking about it, you know, like in a way that we can benefit off of it. There's other ways also that we can I never thought together. about that. That's smart, though. That's really, I didn't even think that's, you know, are you guys doing that? That's, I mean, everybody should be at this point, but that's a great question right. from the buyer. I like that. Marketing is, is, it's a big part of why we are successful because we, you know, we're big on marketing. Yeah. And everybody who follows brands, they need to know, get exactly. it here. Yeah, yeah. Come and do a pop-up or whatever. Yeah. And there are brands that are startup brands. Um, so therefore they might not have that type of following, but do, are they, 
open to, you know, for instance, like a text blast, like sponsoring a text blast or making sure that the bartenders are educated, making sure that we have samples, starting up an order with promos so that the customers are introduced and incentivized to want to try something new. Um, so, you know, for events also as well, you know, I like to put goodie bags together for our customers. So especially for startup brands that want to get their products out there, they'll send me, you know, Samples, units yeah. to put in these bags and then therefore we've had a lot of people get little goodies or a new product in their little goodie bags and be like hey so do you guys sell these and then you know we'll go from there and what kind of events have you been doing there and do you guys do at og nation in maywood so we like to pride ourselves on our weekly takeovers um so pretty much what that consists of is that we will allocate a day which for the most part it's on saturdays and we do them from like four to eight which is our heaviest foot traffic um, because of our happy hour and um, that's a day for the brand to take over the entire store so you know we encourage like the pop-up tents some people will bring vendors I mean um, uh, food vendors they will sponsor food DJs do a dope ass deal um, we had one recently this past Saturday from Dabwoods where you know their make color is orange so they put out an orange carpet throughout the whole store they put display cases they had games DJs food merch raffles incentives for the staff like it was it was really dope so we like the brands to take over the store like that every weekend and therefore it's something for the customers to come and you know check out learn try are you doing these every single week every week oh so you stay busy <laughs> planning and doing shit yeah oh wow so it's every saturday you guys are doing something every saturday oh so that's horrible and for then... you. you gotta work every saturday jeez <laughs> so yeah <laughs> you're like okay i'm off monday tuesday but saturday is i'm there mm -hmm. jeez. yeah so that and then on top of those we have like our og nation days which those are our days i will book a crap load of vendors we'll have we we've partnered up with dirt dog la um so they'll come set up give out hot dogs um, that's when we'll have celebrities come and stop by, say what's up, greet customers, um, BOGOs all day, games, um, yeah. We got to do some stuff with you guys. I, yeah. I can't believe we haven't been out there yet. I know. That's we so get random. The party. Well, is it a party bus? Yeah, I mean, so it can, <laughs> can be. You wanna, hey, you want to get in it? Hey, <laughs> hello. Come on now, Rosa. No, yeah, we have our, this bus. We have our double-decker bus. We pull it out there, and we just come out and then we'll tell the listeners we're going to be there for a meet and greet or whatever and have a barbecue and hang out although we're not a brand that sells anything we just come listen to hey, our podcast it's always good to have that presence though yeah 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 and we always have a big pool like you well you've been here to my party but have yeah. you been here to any other parties that we've had here no i haven't i would remember you too i was thinking when we i'd remember rosa boy look at rosa coming in here daniel he goes did you see rosa i go no she's here yeah she's in the other room you got to go talk to her i go why he goes dude she's so fucking pretty I go, oh my God, Daniel, that's one way to remember. How about she's nice too? Did you talk to her? Well, she just, she seems nice as well, but she's just so pretty, Joe. She's right up your alley. I go, hey, thanks, Daniel. You're right, dude. Hey, he wasn't lying. I was like, hey, who's this girl? I walk in. Is there a photo shoot going on here today? Jeez, I love it. She's camera ready. I love this. Are you like this at work every day too? Sometimes. Oh, God. I got to go to Maywood then. Just come by. I, I like to be comfortable at work. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I won't way. slap on a full face of makeup, but you know. But hey, you're doing the show today. Rosa, everybody that comes in here, we like to do the high five that comes in here. We want to thank everybody that helps us here from Amir to Adrian, Alex C, Alex A, Mondo, Madison, Albert, Teddy the Show Dog, Daniel, Connor V, Kinky Cam, Baxter, Beach Barcelar, Ellie Muffins, Sunday Cassie, Ruby, Mwah, Goldie, Brother Pitt, Mark Carnes, Chris Franquino, Jennifer, Erica, and Elvis. Thank you guys all for doing what you do. And uh, now, now it's time for the high five with Rosa Martinez, the inventory manager and event coordinator at OG Nation. And by the way, do you guys sell gelato at OG Nation? We used to. You used to? You don't do it no more? No. Wow. Can we get some gelato on the shelves over there? I think I know the, <laughs> uh, the owner. I, I see him around here somewhere. Jeez. He's that good looking gentleman in the back over there. Hey. Well, the good thing is Rosa's right here, so I guess you could talk to her. You don't have to talk to a rep. You could talk to the owner. We could figure out how we can get that back on the shelves. But five simple questions, Rosa, just some good answers from you. And how old were you the first time you smoked cannabis, and where'd you get it from? I know you said you were young. How Fuck. young? Sorry. Mom, here we go. Sorry, Mom. 13. Wow. And from a friend's mom who said you should do this. Actually, no. That was when I was a little older. Um... 
I actually got it of a friend who got it off a friend. Who was the friend? I have no fucking clue. You don't remember the friend? You know, you do dumb shit when you're a kid. <laughs> oh, do that I know that? was probably one of those things. Yes, <laughs> I, I do know that have. very well. Yeah. Very, very well. Question yeah. number two of the high five. What is your favorite way to use cannabis? Blunts. Really? Yeah. Which, do you smoke them in what, what, what wrap? Um, woods. Sw- backwards. Backwards. Oh. Mm-hmm. That tells me you like it harsh. You can go deep. <laughs> okay. I want me a bliggity. <laughs> Question number three, Rosa, the high five. If you want to go check out OG Nation, go check it out over there. Good people, good staff. They're educated. They're going to treat you right. Craziest place you ever used or smoked cannabis? Oh, shit. I did it in a classroom. I think I think that's the craziest spot. In high school? Uh, college? College. Where'd you go to college? Um, I went to Rio Hondo. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nice. You graduate? <sighs> you went there for a couple of years. Okay. <laughs> I went there for a couple of years. Well, my main, growing up, I mainly wanted to be a dancer, a professional dancer. So that wasn't really something that you needed to go to college for. You had to be in the industry, audition and doing stuff. But I did go to college, and obviously I wasn't that interested, so I would show up high as hell. I get it. I get it. It's tough. You know, we're going to still see if you got that ballerina flexibility. Oh, Do no, you still no, have no. it? No. A little bit. More no. than most girls. I'm old. Are you a yogi, though? Do you, do you still do yoga I or something? I don't. I just lift weights. <laughs> oh, really? So you just went from that to just lifting hard and just, okay. Because you do look strong, but I'm wondering if you're still flexible like that. Because ballerinas are no joke. Yeah, no. I stopped dancing over 10 years ago. Really? Mm-hmm. Por qué? I just got over it. Started, yeah. well, how old were you when you started? Uh, five. That happens, you know? Mm-hmm. That happened with me with baseball. I started when I was five years old playing baseball, and I... No more. I couldn't do it no more after I got into high school. I, yeah, when I was in high school, I'm like, oh, I hate baseball. I love dancing, but it's just not something that I Do you want. still go out and just banda or anything? or just? Yeah. Do you? Mm-hmm. God, I can't wait to take you out one night. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what is your go-to munchies after you get high? I love chips. What kind? Um, Cheetos. Baked or just regulars? Candy. No. Spicy? The spicy hot Cheetos. Oh, yeah. Did you watch the movie, how they made those? I sure did. That was such a great movie, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Just made you feel all proud, like, yes. Especially when they started giving them out in the hood, like when oh, they thought yeah. it was no good. And it's like, watch this. Let's just get people onto it. Mm-hmm. Like, do the fucking marketing behind this. And now look at it. It's probably the number one seller still to this day mm-hmm. with these brands. It's just such a good I have my good way movie. of eating them, though. I like the, the cheesy puffs. And then I'll get a bag of the Hot Cheetos. And I'll mix them together, shake them up. <laughs> the big fat cheesy puffs, the rounder big ones like that. Yeah. And then you're licking your fingers afterwards so and like your nails. Cheesy mm. and spicy and. Mm. <laughs> Why is my mouth watering right now? That's how fat I am. My mouth is so watering because you just said that right now. Oh, I love that, Rosa. Question number five of the high five: If you could smoke cannabis with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Shit. Probably my grandma. Why grandma? I love that answer, but why grandma? Because I just kind of want to get in her head. I felt like I didn't get to really ever, as a kid, I didn't really get to, like, sit down and have conversations with her, just talk about life. So, and Do I know you she think didn't. she smoked? Oh, hell no. But I'd want to. Right. <laughs> Do you remember good memories with your grandma when Absolutely, you were a little girl? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I never smoked with my parents, grandparents, none of that stuff either. But it's always fun to think about that and if they did. I remember as a kid, my parents used to put cannabis in the rubbing alcohol and it was always in the alcohol like just the weed in there so when we use it Uh it just was flour in there really i was like i didn't know what it was i thought it was just a mexican myth but if you think about it it's like the old school early stages of you know cbd rubbing that's crazy right and i i never until i got older i was like i I didn't know even at the time what was in there but they used to get it from our cousin vince down the street we got to get some more we you know whatever they'd say Uh i never knew but i knew they got it from vince to put in the rubbing alcohol because we were boys Mm -hmm, always mm -hmm. fucking getting hurt and scratching ourselves and always having to rub alcohol in our bodies i never i would have never thought of that right yeah i mean now i just use cbd but i mean makes sense but putting i actually i would still do it now put i don't have any rubbing alcohol at home but i don't think we do but if (laughs) i did i think i need to put some weed in it just because just because doesn't it sound like something to do like an old Mexican myth, but mm-hmm. it was like, that's what my family did. As you said, your grandma just made me think of the old myths and yeah. how people would do things. Yeah, my grandma was probably just as, the same as my mom, thinking weed was bad. But, I mean, 
question. What's your is. mom's favorite strain now? What does she like besides the gummies? So my mom likes indica because she u mainly uses it to sleep. So, um, you know, what's funny is that her favorite gummies are the Apish gummies, which is Jimmy's, who's one of the owners, brand. That's his brand. And she loves those Apish gummies. Like she'll take now. You know, what's funny is that she started off by taking out taking one. And recently she texted me and she was like, Mija, if I take two, will I die? <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. <laughs> like, no, mom, you can't die off of weed. OK, well, what if I take three? I'm like, no, mom, you can't die. She's like, OK, because I took three. <laughs> because I already did it. <laughs> Five milligrams or 10 milligrams? 10 milligrams. Oh, she's up to 30? Mm -hmm. She had a good night's sleep. So, yeah. You know, what's funny is that when I was younger, I played a, uh, uh, a yeah, a, what, what's it called? A prank on her. Um, she asked me to make her tea. And I had a cannabis tea. And I put it in her tea. And I gave it to her, and she drank it. And, like, I want to say maybe, like, an hour later, she just passed out on the couch. <laughs> she never... Sorry, Mom. I think I just exposed myself again. <laughs> that is so awesome. Ay, cabrona, mija. And she wakes up, and she's like, Ay, dormi bien rico. And I'm like... You're right. Oh, well, really? I, oh, I don't know. Good, I know. What? I don't know. What are you looking at me for? Yeah. So, good times. How great is that? And what a story of anecdotal evidence of the family who goes from, ay, por decita, mija, no cannabis, no mota, mm -hmm. to don't come by without the fucking gummies. Tell <laughs> mis churritos and mis gummies. Right? The churros. Bring me the churros. Mm -hmm. the churritos. That is great. Uh, Rosa, is there anything we forgot to mention or you want to mention about your guys' shop over there at OG Nation? Because I know we have a new store opening up soon in El Monte. Yes. So we're getting ready to open the new shop in El Monte. Um, and we do have a lot of projects lined up. You know, big shout out to Carl, Sig, Jimmy, the whole operations team. It would not be as successful as it is if it was not for the whole operations team and our staff. Well, that's great, you guys. Anything else you want to say before we let you out of here? Um, I mean, shit, check us out. Come to our next event. We have an OG Nation Day coming up in, in November. Um, we're going to have a, a good amount of surprises that we're actually working on. I just got the word yesterday from Carl that we're going to have a good amount of entertainment and surprises for everybody. Oh, really? Yeah. You got to get DJ so. Quick out there, too. He used to yeah, kick it in those areas yeah. all the time. We got to get us out there. Oh, I, mean, I let's think go. November, I want to say November 18. November 18, it's a Saturday. Yeah. Well, let's keep us locked and loaded. I want to come out yeah. there and hang out and represent. Yeah, we'd love to have you guys there. Rosa, OG Nation. It's Cannabis Talk 101. If nobody else loves you, we do.